For example, a 58 year old man enjoying good sexual life, uh, prostate measuring 60 cc, discussed uh, in the previous scenario both the options of resume, Eurolift and also to some extent ITIN, quite happy with resume, went home but is now coming back with uh, a disc with a aim to discuss the URP and uh, he's uh, got a voiding test done, Europhometry done which showed a voiding pattern which is obstructed in spite of tamsulosin and finasteride. So how will you explain the TURP with him? Okay. Um, so I would explain that uh, transurethral resection of prostate is the procedure that we know the most about when it comes to surgical management of uh, prostatic obstruction. It's been around for a long time and we um, have a lot of data about it. Um, I'd explain that it's, it usually involves a general or a regional anaesthetic where we core out sections of the prostate um, via the urethra. He would have a catheter placed afterwards, which stays in for usually two or three days. Um, and then we would aim to remove that catheter before he goes home. Uh, prior to listing him for a TURP, I would want to perform a flexible cystoscopy just to assess the effect that the resume has had and ensure that there's no urethral stricture that could be causing his symptoms, although the risk of that is very low with a resume procedure. Okay, I mean, he haven't had resume procedure. He had a discussion, but uh, he, yeah, he wants to go for TURP rather than any newer technologies. Okay, okay. How, how will you proceed with this uh, consent and other things? So I would um, explain that the outcomes are very good for TURP. A core new meter analysis in 2015 demonstrated an increase in, sim in um, a symptomatic improvement of 162%. Um, as well as quality of life improvement in over 70%. I'll explain it can be performed using two technologies, monopolar or bipolar. Uh, my preference would be bipolar. Uh, we know that the outcomes in terms of um, flow and uh, quality of life are comparable between the two technologies, and that's evidenced from a Cochrane review in 2019. However, um, bipolar energy has a more favourable safety profile with um, elimination of TUR syndrome and um, lower blood loss and length of stay. And that's confirmed by the NICE technology appraisal in 2021 as well. I would explain the risks, uh, the indication for the procedure, what it involves. I would show him the, a video that's available on the BAUS website and provide him with a patient information leaflet. I would explain the um, alternatives, which are the other modalities that have been discussed and um, the risks of the procedure. I'd explain that there are general risks of pain, bleeding and infection. I'll explain there will be some likely some bleeding into his catheter when he wakes up and not to be alarmed by this. The risk of significant bleeding, according to the NHS England patient decision aid, is 2 to 10 percent. And that's bleeding that requires either transfusion or return to theatre. I'd explain that um, there's a high risk of retrograde ejaculation afterwards, which can occur in up to 70% of patients. There's also a risk of urethral stricture of about 5% um, and erectile dysfunction of 1% to 5% as well. Okay, so when you are starting the procedure, let's say this is the operation day for him and uh, he's listed as the first procedure for you. So how will you explain it in the day of the procedure and how will you start the procedure? How would I explain it to the patient yeah. in the and, readmission? And start the procedure. How will you proceed with bipolar TURP? Okay, so I would explain um, I would explain to the patient, well, ask the patient if he's got any questions, um, as this has all been discussed previously, explain the risks, as I mentioned. Um, I would check that he is, if he has any strong feelings about blood transfusion, if that's needed or not. Um, I would ensure he's obviously been kept nil by mouth as appropriate. Um, and then in the briefing at the beginning of the day, I would explain the patient's background um, and that we are proceeding with bipolar 
TURP. Um, and I would ensure that all components of the machine are working. I would then begin um, in a appropriately consented, prepared uh, patient with all facets of the WHO checklist in place. I would pass a um, 26 French tourist receptoscope, perform a cystoscopy of the bladder to ensure there's no other pathology. I would identify both UOs, ensure that we have the right irrigation fluid, which should be 0.9% uh, saline. And then I would begin resecting using Blandy's technique. So I would flatten out the median lobe to increase my irrigation flow. And then I would resect at the uh, 11 and two o'clock positions, um, starting on one side. So start at two o'clock, uh, achieve my depth, and then follow that down to the six o'clock position. Uh, my distal limit of resection would be the veru, and I would take care not to undermine the bladder neck. I'll then perform hemostasis at the end of the procedure once um, once I have a good cavity uh, with a roller ball, and then I will place a 22 French three-way coude tipped catheter and commence irrigation. Okay. What are all the methods by which this bipolar system work? How it differs from the monopolar TURP set? So bipolar diathermy works by not passing through the patient. So in the case of TURP, there is the um, active pole, which is the resection loop, and the passive pole, which is usually the sheath, and the loop is coated by a ceramic material. This ensures that the current is flowing um, from the active pole to the passive pole and back to the machine, so it avoids any current through the patient. The advantage of that is that it um, patients with a pacemaker, for example, um, have no interference if the pacemaker is it's all running through the machine. Uh, do you know there are another two types of bipolar system like true bipolar and quasi bipolar? Do you know the difference? No, I don't. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Okay, this patient had an uneven full TURP, so he's in the post-op ward. You are going to review him in the post-op ward. What will be the usual follow-up for these patients? So in the immediate post-operative period, I obviously want to check that he's safe, well and comfortable, that his observations are stable and that there's minimal bleeding, that there's no palpable bladder. In terms of longer term follow-up, um, I would be guided by the GERFT pathway, um, which would be a three month follow-up uh, with PROMS. So I would arrange a follow-up IPSS, um, uroflometry and post-void residual. Uh, that could be done as a virtual telephone clinic um, providing there's capacity for him to have his flow testing beforehand. Okay, that's good. I think the time is gone now. That's a good comprehensive one. So how do you think you did? Okay, I'm not sure if I misunderstood your question mm -hmm. at one point. I understand. Uh, but it's, it's okay because in, in real true exam, this won't happen like that. I, read, I just want to save some time and give you more time to talk. So I said... It's the same scenario as the first one, but patient doesn't want resume or euro lift, but let's go in for TURP so that we will discuss the monopolar and bipolar TURP. Um, I think you did well. This is another very basic scenario. So as basic the scenario is, we are not supposed to make any mistakes. We should be very, very clear in what we are saying. While okay. if the scenario heads towards euro lift, resume, might and yes, there is always a small leeway because most of the examiners may also may not be very well versed with that. Regarding the true bipolar and quasi bipolar system, in, in a true bipolar in the resection loop itself, there will be a passive pole. So the current is very uh, short uh, turn and then the whole current will be taken away by the passive pole. While in quasi bipolar system, the sheath, not the outside of the sheath, the inside of the sheath helps as a returning um, returning pole. It is not that frequently used but it's nice to know the different types of bipolar in use and um, otherwise your evidences are quite good. You have mentioned a few things. The few things are like for example the meta-analysis you mentioned the Qmax improvement is 162% but you said IPSS improvement as 162% a small changes but that will yeah. come with practice and it's not a very big issue. And um, 
bipolar also has got shorter irrigation time apart from shorter duration of surgery and shorter uh, need for the blood transfusion it's shorter irrigation time that's one of the important outcome and mm-hmm. uh, when you discuss the TORP complications divide it as a uh, short term complications long term complications so short term like hematuria tor syndrome infection need for recatheterization need to go to theater all those short term one while long term yeah. one like retrograde ejaculation urinary incontinence etc um you have brought in the method of blandies where we cut at 11 o'clock and 12 to uh, 2 o'clock uh, quite accepted method uh, there are few other methods also available most commonly what we use is the mermaid's method which is a modified alcock and flox modification we create and clear the median lobe first that will help us to give a good irrigation and then the usual resection is at 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock based upon the surgeon's preference of left hand or right hand but blandis mm-hmm. is equally good one but it's nice to know the other methods also if uh, the examiner is particularly knowing about the other one and uh, i'm happy with your follow up plan and follow up plan should be telephone follow up especially if you are not going to make a big impact and uh, in the 3 months period the patient will reach us if there is any major problems as long as there is no problems with that uh, a follow up in 3 months is good uh, you can do an ipss and quality of life prompts measurement just over the telephone because we just want to make sure that patient has got a good improvement there is no need for a routine flow rate post trp some of the trusts are still doing routine trp uh, flow rate not necessary and routine face to face appointment also not necessary in 3 months time if he is comfortable he can be discharged uh, just remember maybe on the day of surgery or at least in the follow up to mention that he can discontinue the tamsulosin and finasteride tablets and we need to ask about his sexual function how happy is he or he needs any support from the sex point of view okay mm-hmm. okay thank you good well done um we got a 